It's been over four years since the last Clue Scroll expansion, which released Mimics into the game. That was 2019. And three years prior to that, they released Master Clues in 2016. So it's been, you know, over four years since we've had a Clue Scroll expansion. And Jagex has hinted, you know, at a potential Clue Scroll expansion. Who knows what that would be? I know whenever a Leagues goes by, people are like, we want stackable Clues. Um, I'm kind of indifferent to the whole idea of stackable clues. I think it could be good, um, but honestly, I would be completely fine. I'd be more than happy if it just never came to that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so we'll talk a little bit more about the stackable clues. But today I want to share what I want to see from a clue scroll guild. Yes, a clue guild. Um, I don't know what it would be called. Probably just like treasure hunter guild or treasure trail guild or clue probably just clue guild sounds the best but i spent an evening just on my phone on my notes app just just bullet pointing of just a billion different things that i want to see from the clue guild so bear with me today boys we're going to be talking all about clue scroll rewards and i also included a few things that not only come from the guild but just quality of life uh from clue scrolls kind of and just a few other updates around the game that would help. Also, I got to give a shout out to Idol's latest video talking about shortcuts. Um, yeah, I agree with almost everything he says on that. I'm saying almost everything just in case there was a thing that somebody's going to point out. And like, oh, you said you didn't agree with this. But like, I agree with 100% of what he said. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, so, but one of the things that he was talking about was... I mean, obviously shortcuts, the whole video was on it, but I was thinking, cause I've been talking about, you know, what if shortcuts actually had use in uh, clue scroll hunting as well? And there will be a point, I'm just gonna bring it up right now cause I might forget, but basically, you know how if you do hard clues, you get the pyramid step, do the agility pyramid and go all the way up there. <laughs> Like it's, it feels really bad when you've already, you know, moved past that course and, you know, which is basically every single player and you have to go up that whole fucking pyramid again. So it would be cool if there was a shortcut that could just send you up there immediately and you don't get any XP, you don't get pet chance, you don't get the pyramid, but at least if you have a high enough agility, you can just send it just to get up there for your clue step. You know what I mean? Anyway, so there's just a lot of like little things later in the video that I'll be talking about. But first, boys, drop a like if you enjoy the video. And be sure to subscribe. And a big shout out to the channel members as always. All right. To enter into the Clue Guild, you will need to have all Clue... My okay, so this is a little bit... Th this might be a little bit, um, a little bit controversial, but... I was thinking to enter into the Clue Guild, you will need to have completed all Clue milestones, which is 600 beginners, 500 easies, and so forth, down to 100 masters. And you have to have done all of them to enter. But then I was thinking, what if it was something like the the Farming Guild, where you kind of get to enter a little bit, but then there's like other tiers of it. But the thing is, the more I thought about that, the more it just became convoluted and just really weird and there's just not enough stuff in the clue guild to warrant having like different sections to be quite honest so i was thinking maybe this and there's a lot of perks to this place which is why i've kind of come to the conclusion that maybe it's best if you can only enter the clue hunting guild or clue guild after all milestones have been achieved so let me know what you guys think down in the comments obviously that doesn't there's no comment needed right now because you don't know what's in the clue guild but there's a lot of good stuff so First thing is, by entering the Clue Guild, you get a little gift, basically. And that gift is a brand new spade, which has a teleport option to the guild. Yes, your spade can be right-clicked, and that can teleport you to the guild. And the animation would be you digging a hole and falling through the hole and just ending up at the Clue Guild. I oh, by the way, I saw this Reddit post of, like the teleport animations that happen after you've teleported, those look sick. It doesn't even delay you at all. It just has like the little thing of you not shrinking, but unshrinking, coming back to like full size, like right after you teleport. That, that would be really cool if this dig animation was like you dig a hole and then you fall through the ceiling of the clue guild to like end up there, you know? I don't know. I thought that would be cool. So that that's one thing I would love to see. 
The other thing is Fallow the Bard, his brother Hallow, or I, I literally spe I spelled it Hallow, and then it would just came out as Halo. <laughs> I don't something is whatever, whatever his brother's name is, will be there in the Clue Guild, and he can be used for Fallow steps, and he's standing right next to the bank. There's also a bank at the uh, Clue Guild, which is just really convenient. It'll be probably the fastest bank. One of the fastest, but I know there's already some fast bags. Like there's obviously crafting guild glory and stuff. Um, there's like hallowed sepulcher teleports. Those are about two to three ticks to a bank, but obviously it's an item you need. It's the same thing as a spade. The spade you'll need to have in your inventory. So even though it's a fast bank, it's like almost the equivalent, I would say of like a hallowed sepulcher, but it's unlimited. So anyway, I think that would be cool for, hallow to be there so if you have you know whatever like a fallow step you can just be at the clue guild and show the item to him um and yeah and okay so i had a second point saying that there should be a stash unit to hold all your fallow items now i still want to see that although it's not going to be as useful because hallow or whatever is going to be right there and your bank is right there so you know but i was still thinking we could have a stash box where you can like shove all your fallow items just to clear up some bank space that's what i was thinking but it really is pretty irrelevant at this point because the bank's just right there but still i think it would be cool to have a stash unit and if you go there um i think it would be cool if it like automatically just selected the item that you needed instead of like having a list but i think the most feasible option would just be like a huge list of all your items and you have to click it and withdraw it but yeah, I was thinking that would be kind of cool. Now, uh, the other thing I'd like to see in the Clue Guild is a mailbox to Watson. Yes, a mailbox to Watson. So what you can do is deposit your lower tier clues into this mailbox and they get instantly sent to Watson. So if you're looking to get a master clue scroll and you're just like opening your implings or whatever, you can just shove the clue into the mailbox. And then as soon as you have the um easy medium and hard and elite in the mailbox you instantly get an elite from like in the mailbox like so the elite comes from the mailbox so you don't need to go to watson every single time to uh, claim your elite or master sorry i keep confusing the terms your master clue would come in the mailbox after you've um deposited the other four lower ones jesus christ i'm s suffering right now okay here we go so i think that would be kind of cool just a little bit more convenience for those that have unlocked the clue guild just you know easily deposit them there and withdraw um now the other thing that this is like the biggest section of the clue guild is a clue dungeon yes a clue dungeon and i'm not fully certain whether i like all the points i made on this clue dungeon but i'm gonna i'm gonna keep with it and you guys can let me down know, know down in the comments if you guys enjoy it or not so Clue dungeon with double drop rates of clues, but no loot. So, besides relic pieces, which we'll talk about. They're kind of like totems. Um, so, the clue dungeon is fully multi and cannonable. That is important. It's a place where it's just fucking free for all. Just do whatever the hell you want. You can barrage and cannon similar to the Wilderness Slayer Cave. I fucking love doing that stuff. And I think the clue guild... As long as you're not getting loot from it, I think it's completely fair if you're just like clue hunting and you're just wanting to just send it, you know, just kill a billion things. So the monsters in the guild, these are just a few ideas, would be black dragons. Now these black dragons would be the wilderness variants of black dragons, which means that, and, and basically I've made it very kind of convoluted where the black dragons in the wilderness slayer cave have a drop chance of elites and hards and the elite is one in 250 and the hards is one in 128 but if you're wearing a ring of wealth it becomes one in 125 and one in 64 respectively and then i was thinking we'll use that rate to put into the clue guild so um and so then you gotta also cut the rates in half or sorry double the drop rates of the clues which would mean that the drop rates are basically like a 1 in 64 for an elite and a 1 in like 32 for a hard from these black dragons in there. And you can cannon them 
And yeah, I just think that would be cool. And you can like have them in multi. So I think that would be a really cool thing for like elites and hards. Now, of course, you're not going to be getting drops. I was thinking maybe it's still appropriate for them to just drop like a dragon bone, you know, similar to like Nightmare Zone where you kill a dragon. It doesn't really have loot, but Elvarg still drops a dragon bone. I was like, eh, maybe. Maybe that would be fine. But I'm still under the impression that none of these things drop any loot. It would just be to get clue scrolls. Um, hellhounds would be there. Now, these would be the wilderness hellhounds. So, the one in um, 32 drop rate. So, basically, these hellhounds would have a drop rate for a heart of 1 in 16. So, that would be really, really nice. Again, no drops, but they already don't have any drops. Jellies would be in there. These would be warp jellies. So, 1 in 32 for a hard clue. And you could barrage them. Um, no loot. Again, Fally guards would be in there for medium. So I thought that would be kind of interesting just to have like a, have like a room of like 20 fucking Fally guards that you can just barrage and you can like, you know, stack up and cannon. <laughs> and then you also get a double drop chance at uh, medium clues. I think that would just be such a fun method to get mediums. Um, so I thought that would be kind of cool. The other are ham members now these ham members would be attackable and they would have you know a double the drop rate so right now it's a one in 50 for an easy pickpocketing this would be a one in 25 and you could just you know barrage the hell out of them and just have a bunch of ham members clustered in this little room and just cannon them and stuff and you'd get easies you know every one in 25 which you know would be kind of cool there's probably better methods for easy it's really hard to compete with the current methods but that would still be like really good and Minotaurs. Minotaurs, if you guys don't know, drop easies and beginners. So Minotaurs would be in there and you can just barrage them and, you know, whatever the hell else you want to do. And yeah, so those are kind of the monsters. There's probably some more that I miss and that would be really cool to have in there. But those are just a few selections that I decided would be kind of cool for the dungeon. Now, every monster gives clue relic pieces, which are similar to dark totems from the catacombs of Karend. Now, these relics will allow you, when they combine, so there's three pieces to it, exactly similar to a totem. When you combine them, the relic will allow you to fight Quantum Yuri. Yes, Yuri, you know, the purple guy that you fight during Clue Scrolls. There's a Quantum version of him, which is just a mini fight you do, and who knows what the mechanics would be. It's not going to be anything crazy. It's going to be shorter than Scotizo, probably, but... You don't get any loot. Maybe you get some loot. Maybe you get like some sweets or something as like guaranteed loot. I think that would be appropriate. Just, you know, a nice handful of sweets, maybe like 50 or so or 100. 100 is kind of a lot, but who knows? Depending on how rare the relics are. But then you also get guaranteed two random clue tiers. So every time you kill this Quantum Yuri, two clues drop from him ranging we're not even gonna fucking include beginners because i i'm just gonna ha oh my god i would rage if i got a beginner you know so we're just not even we're gonna exclude beginners from this drop table it would just be easies through master yes this would be the first npc that would be able to drop a master clue scroll so this quantum yuri would drop too the potential is there for it to drop a master and an elite but it could also just drop an easy and a medium you know so, and again, this is all under the assumption that you that we do not have stackable clue scrolls yet. So, if that ever came, you I mean technically you could get two masters, but again, I I'm, I'm kind of throwing out these ideas as if there are not stackable clues. So, I thought that would be really cool, you know, a little Godos thing where like you're in the clue dungeon doing your stuff, you're stacking up these relics for you to use at a, at a later time, then you do this huge you know, surge of killing these quantum Yuri's and every time you kill it, you get two random clues and one could be a master. I just think that's exciting. I think that'd be kind of cool. So also one of the, one of the cool things about the clue guild is there would be an NPC that you can talk to that would give you access to master tokens. And these master tokens, for those that don't know, this is an idea I think originated by Iron Queen. And basically it's like, Instead of getting a master clue from a lesser tier casket, for example, you open an elite and you have that one in five chance of getting a master, it would be a master token instead of a master clue. And the reason this would be a nice feature for those that want it is that you 
can just have these tokens stack up. So whenever you get a master token, you're not forced to do the master clue immediately. You can just have them stack up. And then what you do is just whenever you want to send them. So who knows, maybe you've done, maybe you did an opening of like 300 hards and now you have 20 master tokens. You can just deposit those master tokens into Watson's mailbox and he'll just give you a master or go to Watson himself and he'll just give you a master clue scroll. So I think that'd be just amazing, just master tokens. And of course, there is now for those that are wondering like, oh my God, like this would be kind of game breaking. I don't think it is. I don't, I don't even know if anybody's thinking it's game breaking, but just to give an idea of what master tokens could have been without the clue guild. So the clue guild forces you to have done a hundred masters in the first place. What I don't want to see is this option coming into the game for everybody on day one of your account creation. Because what that means is you could just kill a bunch of goblins on your like level three hardcore Iron Man that you just made and just get a bunch of, or not, go is, do goblins drop easies? Maybe they drop easies in beginners, I can't remember. But whatever drops easy, let's just say you're thieving ham members. And then you send like a thousand easies. It would be unfair for you to be able to stack 20 masters at such a low level where, uh, you know, where you can't even prove that you can even do a master. So now you're just getting all these stacked up clues for a later date when you can send them all. I think it's appropriate for you to at least prove that you can even do master clues before you get this chance of getting tokens. So that's why the limitation is that you need to have done um, 100 masters just to enter the clue guild to get this option. So let me know what you guys think about that. Now... <clears throat> This this might be a little bit crazy, but hear me out, hear me out. So there is a Clue Guild store. Yes, there is a store at the Clue Guild where you can go and purchase a very various things, which we'll get into. But this is what I decided to be the currency. You don't buy it with GP. You buy it with your Clue currency, which is a retroactive counter of all the clues you've ever done and how that would work is you would get one clue point or one clue coin or whatever the hell they're called from a beginner you'd get two from easies three from mediums five from hards 10 from elites and 15 from masters so those obviously are subject to change we could change them up a little bit but it would retroactively count every single clue you done like when the clue guild releases it would give you a set currency of all the clues you've ever done on your account currently. And that would be how much currency you have to spend at this thing. So this currency would just be the amount of clues that you have completed. And here are what the store includes. So th this is the craziest reward probably. But after talking to Alkin on the Sebe cast, he was, he was talking about, you know, what RS3 does for Clues Girls and how many, like, insane quality of life and potentially just super easy scape updates there are. But again, this would come with you having done a bunch of clues in the first place, like the, the hard way, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I thought instead of a Clue Scroll outfit, which is in RS3 where you can just equip the Clue Scroll outfit, and basically what that outfit does is acts as your stash unit items. So... You just have to wear the clue scroll outfit and whenever you get a stash step, you don't even have to go to your stash unit. You just perform the emote with your clue hunting outfit and it works for all stash. And I was thinking what would be even better than that is a clue blessing. This clue blessing would act as every single one of your stash unit items. So, so the coolest part about this is you can actually just wear fashion scape or just wear your generic clue hunting outfit for those that are like max clue hunters, your candor and headgear and everything else. Um, but then you just have a blessing in your blessing slot, your ammo slot, and that would just act as all your stash unit things. So that would be something that would be expensive at the clue store that would just just give you a little bit more convenience with all clues, uh, with all clue tiers. So I think that would be an amazing item to get. Again, these don't need to come in. I'm just throwing out ideas. So for those that are just thinking this is completely busted, um, but yeah, I thought that would be really just nice. The other thing is an imbue that you can buy for the deer stalker hat, which is an elite clue reward. You get like a little deer stalker hat, which is the same one that Sherlock wears. 
and this would be an imbue for that hat to teleport you to Sherlock. So instead of you needing to get your candor and headgear, or if you think it's ugly as fuck, which I think it is, then you could use a Deerstalker hat imbue and wear your Deerstalker hat around the game while doing Clues Girls, and that would teleport you to Sherlock. Um, the other thing I'd like to see is an imbue for the ham joint to teleport you directly into the into the ham hideout. So you would get an imbue, you'd already have to have a ham joint if you're an Iron Man, and then you combine the two, and now that ham joint has a teleport option on it, which teleports you directly into the ham guild or the ham hideout. Um, the other thing I'd like to see is an imbue for the mask of Ren Ranol or Renol or whatever that thing you get from Forthos Dungeon from killing those like undead zombies or whatever or zombie mage whatever the hell they're called undeads they're already by saying zombie they're already undead we know that but zombie mages or whatever the hell they are um, that would have an imbue that you could teleport directly to the Forthos Dungeon now. Of course, that sounds like this is just a way for me to get a Serachnus quicker. But by this point, if all of these things came out, Serachnus would be completely dead content. There would just be so many better ways. The Clue Dungeon would be the way you get clues. But for those that would still want to kill Serachnus or just have convenience getting there, you would have to go get a Mask of Renol, which is like one in a thousand from those zombies, and then you could imbue it. And that would teleport you unlimited times to the fourth host dungeon. Um, and then... Yeah, so those are kind of like the imbues I was thinking of. And then I was thinking, what if there was a an item called Yuri's Pendant? And this Yuri's Pendant could be purchased, which would grant 50% more clues at skilling sources. So currently, as you're skilling, like clue scrolls are just super, super rare. Um, and I just think it would be cool to have like a little buff little i mean it's not quite double but it is 50 percent more clues who knows maybe we we'll just fucking make it 100 percent more clues make it double but something that would just make skilling sources of clue scrolls more common and i thought it would be cool to just have a little yuri's pendant that you just wear around your neck and that would just be the way to get more the other thing i want to see is a lucky big net so this would be a big net that you could buy which is lucky <laughs> and it gives you double clues at big net fishing which would also stack with the yuri's pendant so you'd basically be getting like four times the amount which already the clues rolls are insanely rare so this is not and this literally is nothing game breaking but i always thought big net fishing was really cool there's a way to like also two ticket which is just very chill and very fun fun uh it, it's chill and it's satisfying and it's like a pretty decent xp it's like 95k at 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 99 fishing um and the reason big net fishing is because that is one of those fishing spots where you get like caskets and you get like old boots and random shit it's like you're basically just fishing a bunch of shit and i thought it would be cool for that method in particular to be given some love and who knows and you know what i'd also love to see those caskets that you get from big net fishing they're the same ones you get from dagonoth's where you just get like a gem or like a, a super a super uh, uncommonly like a tooth half or a loop half. I think it would be cool if those caskets could give chances at like easy, medium, and hard clues or something. Just something even extra. Um, the other thing I want to see from the clue store is a jar keeper perk. So this jar keeper perk would act exactly like the um, jar keeper from... Uh, impling jar keeper from rune light where like you can spam your implings and then you know it'll like stop you from spamming them more once you get a clue scroll but this would be jagex and like this would be jagex's end so it, which would mean that you actually cannot open anymore after you get a clue scroll so this would be like the rune light plugin on steroids where you literally could not open another um thing without or I don't know if I think I think Jagex has the power to do this because there's I think if you open like three jars on the same tick, but the first one is a clue scroll. I think Jagex has the power to prevent the other two from being opened. I'm not fully sure on that, but I think on Jagex's end, they can actually do something like that. So that would be really cool. So it wouldn't be a rune light feature. It would just be in game. That would be an unlock you could get. Um, so this is kind of going back to the shortcut idea. Um, from the beginning of the video, I was thinking what would be cool is a magic pyramid lamp. 
And this would be a stackable teleport that teleports you instantly up to the agility pyramid. Again, no XP, no pyramid top, no pet chance. But it would just be a little stackable thing, similar to like a Dorgishin orb, Dorgishkan orb, whatever those things are called, where you just smash it and then you're instantly there. This would be like you smash it and you're instantly up at the top of the pyramid. Um, actually, that would be tough because you need to get the stash unit on. Maybe there would be a stash unit up there at that point. You know what? They should really just fucking add the stash unit up there on the pyramid. That would be a lot more convenient. I've, I've had one time in particular where I forgot to bring my <laughs> items up there. Uh, I, it, I'm surprised it's only been once, but yeah, I have done that and it's really tilting. So that would be a stackable thing you just buy with clue points. And Dragon's Eye, which is a little glass Dragon's Eye that you can buy, which is also a stackable teleport that immediately teleports you to Dragon's Eye, that master clue step that nobody likes to go to. So that would, again, be just a purchasable thing that you could get there. Um, there would also be a DK's Ladder teleport sphere where there is an elite step that takes you directly to where you need to dig right by the DK's layer ladder. And I thought it would be cool if there was a purchasable, um, stackable teleport thing that you could use to get there. Now, this would obviously have some consequences in PVM, but I really don't think it's that crazy for bosses that came out in like fucking 2004 or whatever the hell, DKs, like, two, what is it, 2006, 2005? Like, somewhere in that era, DKs were released. And for some reason, we still have this crazy idea in our heads that we need to keep it, like, insane to get there, just a fucking trek. So I thought this would be a great place to give sackable teleports. These would be expensive, obviously, because you have to get it from the Clue Guild. And, yeah. Well, I don't know how expensive they'd actually be. But I thought that would be kind of cool to have a teleport there. There would also be some dies at the Clue Guild. Now, before you guys start freaking out like dies from RS3, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking these dies would just be able to dye your Bloodhound's hat. So if you have a Bloodhound, I think he has a green hat or whatever the hell color, blue. Whatever the color is, but you could just change it. And so this is a very minor little cosmetic change for your Bloodhound. I thought that would be kind of cool. And also, this is not with the, so that that's done with the Clue store. This is another idea I was thinking, and this is what I've talked about on Cast and other things, is that the Mimic needs to be able to give Mimic dust. So 1 in 50, I was thinking, to kill Mimic, and instead of dropping a mahogany plank, it would drop a Mimic dust which you could use on your Bloodhound to transmog it into a Mimic that would bounce around behind you. That would be the Bloodhound transmog. So I thought that'd be kind of cool. Okay, so that is my idea for the Clue Guild. There's some other things that I think would be, you know, kind of cool that I constantly think of. But these are like the main things I just wanted to talk about. So yeah, that's the Clue Guild for you. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments. Things that, would, things that need to be changed. Things that you would like to see additional things that are just incredibly OP that I mentioned that maybe shouldn't come into the game for good reason. <laughs> anyway, let me know down in the comments. Um, other things I'd like to see from Clue Scrolls in general, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is Pyramid Plunder should give Clue Scrolls. And I think they could base off of like the room level, similar to Hallowed Sepulchre. Hallowed Sepulchre ranges from easies to elites, but the further you go down the Sepulchre, the better chance of or not better chance, but the higher tier clues you get. So I think that would be cool for them to give to Pyramid Plunder. Pyramid Plunder is like one of those things that's just completely... It's not completely dead content. And it still is good XP for like mains that just want to chill. But it's... I don't know. And you still get the Pharaoh Scepter, of course. So people need to do it. But it doesn't feel good doing it just for a Pharaoh Scepter. It feels like shit. So I thought it would be cool to give some clue scrolls from there. I also thought it would be cool for Herbivore to give clues, maybe just mediums. I think that would just be an amazing method to just run around doing Herbivore and get the occasional medium clue. Like, is that a big deal? The reason mediums is because mediums have such a dominating meta for the past, like, eight years, which is just go to Piro Piro, which is fucking tilting that that's still the meta. Um, also, Shaman, the Shaman Temple Stone Chests, you should not be failing those at 99. That should be unfailable at 99 thieving. So if you want to get your mediums from that source, you're not going to be teleported out every fucking 10, 
10 loots or less at 99. I think that's ridiculous. So change that. Um, these are some other things that I'd like to see. Brimstone keys, Laren keys, and grubby chest keys could potentially give clue scrolls. I think that's fair when opening a chest, get a chance at a, at a clue. Um, hallowed sacks from the hallowed sepulcher need to give clues. And the reason they need to give clues is because those hallowed sacks originally represented exactly the loot that you would get from a chest inside hallowed sepulcher. So when they finally started giving clue scrolls from those chests, they never updated hallowed sacks. So those hallowed sacks are, they cost like a hundred hallowed marks, I believe. And it's just, it's literally a replica of the loot that you'd find inside the sepulcher. But now it's no longer a replica because there's no clue scrolls. So just add the clue scrolls to there. I think that'd be cool. Um, I also thought it'd be nice if carpenter points from Mahogany Homes could give a chance at, I don't know, a clue scroll here and there, mediums maybe, or hards. I don't know. Something like that, that would make doing that mini game a little bit nicer in the store, have a little bit more use. So you could save up some points and just buy clue scrolls there. Anyway, those are my ideas, boys. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments about all this stuff. There's so many more things that are floating through my mind with Clues Girls, but I don't want to just completely flood you guys. So anyway, that's a little video I thought would be just fun to share. And hopefully it sparked some of your guys' imaginations for what you would like to see from a Clues Girl expansion. Um, I didn't even talk about Third Age stuff, but yeah, we could, we could get some Third Age boots in there. Please, fucking please, Third Age boots. We need those now. Anyway, guys, have a good rest of your day. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.